Now let's talk about how do you simplify radicals. So if you have this expression, for example, the radical of uh, 32x to the fifth, and you know, let's say you're doing a problem and you get that as your answer and you look at the correct answer and it looks a little bit different, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you're wrong because they might have just simplified it a bit further. And so uh, how, could you, how can you rewrite this? How can you simplify this a bit? And the key is this. The key is that if there's a perfect square inside the radical that's multiplied, you can always pull that out and undo the square. So here's what that means. So for example, uh, and with all these, just like with a lot of these questions, it's, it's good to separate the coefficient with the variable. So let's first just focus on the 32. The 32, if that was a perfect squared, if that was like 25, you could just say, you know what, the square root of 25 is five, pull that out, and then, you know, it's just five on the outside of a radical and you're done. But here, 32 is not a perfect square. So we gotta ask ourselves, can we break down 32 as the product of things, something times something, where well, one of those things is a perfect square? Well, let's see. Um, perfect squares are one, four, nine. Well, right after that, four would work, right? Four times eight, so we could do that. Another one that would work, probably even better, would be 16. The 16 times two is 32, and 16 is four squared, right? So first of all, we could just rewrite this as root, and that's really, I'm just gonna write this first as 16 times two, right? And I'm just gonna keep the x to the fifth as x to the fifth for now. All right, that being said, the 16 now, because that is four squared, I'm gonna now rewrite that further a little bit here as four squared, just to see where it's coming from, that's four squared. So when I pull four squared out of the radical, it's just four. So if I were, if that was 16 on the inside, that's gonna equal four on the outside. So that's gonna be four on the outside. And then on the inside, I'm left with just the two x to the fifth power. All right, so that's how you could simplify coefficients. Just find, you know, break it down as a product where one thing's a perfect squared, pull out that perfect squared. If after doing that, if what you're left with on the inside is also, can also be further, uh, broken down as a perfect square, you could pull that out as well. If you would have divided this by four, then four times eight, well then that eight can further be done as four times two and that four could come out again. But anyway, so now what about this though? What if you have a variable? Well, technically you're doing the same thing. You're trying to see if x to the fifth power could be written as a product of things where one of those things is a perfect square. So the easy thing to do is you could say, you know what? You could just break down the x to the fifth and say x to the fifth is really x squared times x cubed, right? Uh, because x squared, yeah, because you're going to add those to get x to the fifth. So, And you know that x squared is a perfect square, right? It's a square of x. So, you know, so when you do that, when you break it down like that, this guy can come out of the radical as an x. And, and then you're left with this on the inside. But then you could do that one more time with x cubed. What I would do though in this situation is you always wanna try if possible to pull out as much as you can on the first shot. So here, yeah, you could break it down like this, but you could also break it down as x to the fourth times x, right? Because when you multiply those, you add the exponents here. And so we have this and guess what? x to the fourth is a perfect square because that's x squared squared right, because x squared squared is x to the fourth. So long story short, I could then break this down. I'm just gonna rewrite this now as, let's see, we got a four here, and on the inside, this can be written as two, and instead of x to the fifth, I'm gonna write it as x to the fourth, which is really x squared squared times just my x. So again, this is just a fancy looking x to the fifth, but now it's clear that I could pull this guy out and it comes out though, not as x to the fourth, like it is right now, but as x squared. So that's gonna be four, and then the x squared comes out. And now what am I left with on the radical on the inside? Just this two and just this x. So just two x. So if you look uh, at the answer and it's this, which looks very different from this, well, to a mathematician, those two are the same thing. There's no difference between those two things. Let's just do one more example now. Uh, all right, let's apply that here. Now notice here, this is not a square root, but rather a cube root. So whenever you have a cube root, 
Well, you might have already guessed, essentially what you're looking for is not perfect squares, but perfect cubes. And so if you could break something down as a perfect cube, and then you could then you could pull that out. So perfect cubes, as far as let's first talk about the coefficient, what are perfect cubes? Well, one cubed is one, two cubed is eight, three cubed is twenty-seven, and so on. So right off the bat, you know, this well let, let's see. We could break this down as uh let's see, the only perfect cube that even seems within reason is eight, uh, which is two cubed. Uh, but this can be broken down as eight times three. So here, I'm going to first write this as 8 times 3. So that's 8 times 3. All right, and while we're here, let's see what we can break these down as. So, uh, or, yeah, so let's see what we can do here. So now we're trying to find perfect cubes. So to find perfect cubes, let's let, what are the perfect cubes of x? Well, x cubed is just x cubed, but uh, after that, you so we just want to pull out as many x cubes as possible. So It'd be x cubed, x to the sixth, x to the ninth, right? If you were to keep taking x to a higher and higher, uh, x cubed to a higher and higher power, this is x cubed to the first power, x cubed to the second power, x cubed to the third power, and so on. So looking at these, you could basically factor this out as x to the ninth times x. That's that you could write as x to the ninth times x, and y cubed already is a perfect uh, cube, so we could just leave that as is. And uh, with z, that's not that's even less than the perfect cube of, than the first cube of z. So that's just going to be z squared. We, we can't really pull that out at all. So looking at that, we could uh, then pull out this eight, which comes out as a two because two cubed with eight. So we're pulling out the two. We're pulling out this now. If that was a little bit confusing about how they work with the variables, think about it this way. The cube root is really something to the one-third power. So x to the ninth to the one-third power, which is what we're doing here, right? We're basically taking this whole thing to the one-third power, is going to be 9 times one-third, which is 3. So that's just going to be x cubed over here. And similarly here, we're going to pull this out as well. Again, that's y to the sixth, and it's really the cube root of that, which is the same thing as saying to the one-third power, which means you multiply six times a third, and that's two. So it's really y squared that we can pull out of this guy. So that comes out as a y squared. And then you're finally just left with all the things on the inside that we didn't uh, underline. So this three, the x, and the z squared. So that's three x and z squared, and that's how you simplify that.